Hey there, I'm Ken, this is Canadian Retro Things, and I got this for Christmas. So today we're going to look at this, we're going to see exactly what comes with it, we're going to take a look at how this differs from an original Atari 2600, we're going to try it out. We're going to try it out with some original Atari 2600 cartridges. We're even going to try it out with the homemade cartridge that I made a little while ago from the PCB that I had printed from PCB Way. Hey, you know, that's a great segue for the sponsor of today's video, PCB Way. PCB Way, where you can have PCBs printed starting at only $5 for 10 PCBs. And this is a great deal if you're going to buy an Atari 2600 Plus and you don't have a lot of physical cartridges. Because you need physical cartridges for it. There's no built-in games here. So go to the Shared Projects page, choose from a number of different designs for Atari 2600 cartridges, order them, build them, and play. So visit PCB Way today at www.pcbway.com. And this is everything that you get in the box. You get a power cord, which is USB powered. Interesting enough, as I was uh, looking at these on Amazon and other places, I was looking at some of the reviews of them, and I always like to read the one-star reviews to uh, see what people are saying. And one of the complaints that a few people actually had is that this only came with a cable. It didn't come with a power um, little brick for the USB cable, which I think is hilarious because, yeah, it doesn't come with one, but if you're like just about everybody I know, you probably have a whole drawer full of these from different phones and other things. That's all you need. So I'm actually kind of glad that they didn't include yet another one of these. You get an HDMI cable. You get a joystick, which is the CX40 Plus joystick basically a recreation of the original CX40 joystick. So we'll be taking a look at how this plays compared to an original, because this unit will work with originals. And you also get the 10-in-1 game cartridge. Another one that people complained about, because it's got dip switches on the back. And people were complaining about how small these dip switches are. Definitely people that back in the day never used anything with dip switches because that's just the size of them. Now, looking at the unit itself, it, uh, yeah, looks really nice. It is smaller than a ri an original Atari 2600. They've got a nice full wind wood grain on it, just like the original. As a matter of fact, here's it in size comparison to an original. And it's got the four switches here for power. Nice clicky switches too. Color black and white. Game select and game reset, just like an original Atari 2600. Cartridge port, of course. Now the cartridge port is a little bit different than the uh, original Atari 2600, and I'll get into that a little bit later. And now we look around the back of the machine and we've got our um, USB power outlet got two joystick ports for the old-fashioned nine-pin joysticks that the uh, original Ataris took. Difficulty switches for both joysticks. Your HDMI out. 
And this little switch here, which puts you in widescreen mode, which stretches all the old original games, or four to three mode, which is the original aspect ratio. This is going to stay in the four to three mode for me. Some people might like it in the widescreen um, aspect ratio, so it takes up the entire screen. So how exactly does this unit work? Well, you put your cartridge in, you turn it on, and it actually downloads the ROM from the cartridge onto an emulator, which is on board this unit. Now that unfortunately means that there is a small handful of Atari cartridges that will not work on here. There are cartridges that have extra chips on board for things like sound and whatnot. And uh, yeah, when you download the ROM on there, you're not accessing the cartridge anymore, which is required for using those extra chips. So unfortunately that doesn't work, but it does work with Atari 7800 cartridges, which I cannot test because I don't have one. So let's plug this in and take a look at it. I have got the Atari 2600 Plus hooked up. Got the 10 in 1 cartridge ready to go. We'll turn it on. And we get a nice little logo before it loads the game into memory. Now, one of the interesting things that I like about it is that the Atari symbol on the front of the machine right here lights up. Well, this is on. So in essence, it's a power button. So here we have Adventure, one of the very first adventure games. So I love adventure games. Switches on this thing do all the regular things like black and white or color. Your game select and starting your game. So this is most famously uh, the game where back in the old days, Atari did not publish the programmer's names. So the programmer of this game got around that by putting an Easter egg in here. That, uh, yeah. You can find his name and stuff programmed into the little, what became known as an Easter egg. Now, many people mistakenly believe that that was the very first Easter egg of a video game. It wasn't. There were a number of them before, as early as the early 70s. And even possibly into the 1960s, I had heard something about that, but I haven't been able to confirm that. Just the 1973, I think it was Lunar Lander one. Anyway, so. And here we are into one of the um, most notable Atari games that everybody had. I believe this actually was a pack-in game with the uh, original machine. This is from August 1977. This is Combat. It's one of the original nine um, launch titles for the Atari. And it's actually for two players. Unfortunately, I have no friends, so I have nobody to play with. But you just have to fight your opponent. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of different systems you can use. There's ones where your tanks are invisible unless you fire. Then there's airplane ones. Different. And there's jets. There's just a ton of games in combat. Next game. And here we have Dodge'em. This is a fairly simple game where you just drive around the track, avoiding the oncoming car, and you have to eat all the dots. So a little bit of a different take on Pac-Man. And you change lanes to avoid the car. And if you crash, you have to start all over. Played this game a ton as a kid. We had competitions all the time. 
Next, we are in February of 1982 with Haunted House. This is one of my favorite Atari games. Basically, your little eyeballs, and you're moving around a haunted house trying to find things. And I love the fact that your eyeballs move in the direction that you are moving. There are ghosts, there are spiders, there are other things, and you have... Uh, and when you die, your eyes spin around. You also have a candle. It's a great game. It's one of the earliest survival horror games. Next, we have September 1980's Maze Craze. And this game... I know almost nothing about other than it's kind of a two-player game, can be played as one player, you're trying to work your way through a maze the fastest that you can. I have never played this game before. I'm going to have to play around with it a little bit. Maybe if I find somebody to play with, I'll have to give it more of a try. Next, we have that classic from April 1981, and that is Missile Command. Which, of course, everybody knows Missile Command. You just got to blow up the missiles. And this is a good game to now try the original joystick in here see if I can notice any di difference between that and the one that I've been playing with and here we are with the original joystick and well one thing about it this joystick has been used a whole lot more it feels a little bit looser But the other joystick worked just fine too. So honestly, if you don't have an original joystick, the uh, included one works just fine. And now we move on to the next game, which is Real Sports Volleyball. Yet another one of these games I never played, so. I've never been much into any of these sports games, so. We'll just uh, jump out of this one. It's on there anyway. And next we have a game called Surround, which is well, if you originally uh, read it, it explains it as kind of a snake style game, but this is actually a lot like Tron Light Cycles, long before Tron Light Cycles was ever a thing. Again, two players. I only have one player to play with, so. But as you can see, you just got to. Uh, Make the other guy run into your trail. And here we are with video pinball. Huh, this is... A game. It's definitely a pinball game. The physics on it are a little wonky and, um, yeah. I normally really like video pinball games, but... And I guess this one's good for seeing where the whole genre kind of came from. And the last game included on here is... Dun, 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 dun. ...1981's Yard's Revenge, which is interesting because it actually never came out until 1982. It's But it's listed as being in 1981, so... And if you've never played Yara's Revenge, then uh, 
what what uh, rock have you been living under? Now, one of the things I'm interested in, and I think probably you're interested in, is that these dip switches make a lot more than 10 different things. What happens if you set the dip switches to something that's not listed as an official game here? I know one right off the bat. Let's see what happens. Loading game failed. Okay. I'm actually going to go through and see if all the other dip switch positions all do the same thing, or is there something hidden on this cartridge? I don't know. Let's find out. Now it's time to try out one of my original cartridges. I'll try a couple of those just to see how they work. Pac-Man. This was often lauded as a horrible game for the Atari 2600, but I am a Pac-Maniac, and I actually kind of like this version of it. It is definitely not as bad as so many people always say. It's a perfectly playable version of Pac-Man. Uh, it doesn't have the same screen. Um, your ghosts are constantly blinking because, of course, um, it's just for every... Uh, it's only drawing one ghost at a time. That's why they blink. So it has to draw each of the ghosts separately. And, yeah. There's the, only the one exit, which is the bottom to the top or the top to the bottom. So Pac-Man works just fine off of an original cartridge. Just pop another one in there. How about pole position? I absolutely love racing games. All right, here we go. Looks great, works great. Yes, um, no complaints here. So we have one more little thing to try. As I said earlier, we're going to try my homemade cartridge that I bought the PCBs from PCB Way and see how well that works or whether it works in here or not. Okay. Now, the problem that I run into with this is that it's completely open on the um, PCB insertion part here, so you can easily misalign a bare circuit board like this. Um, it's not um, that easy to do on the old Ataris because they're closed off at the size of the circuit board that goes into the uh, thing. Here's a shot from one of my original Atari 2600s. So what I do is I just went and got one of my broken cartridges and I took the little um, protection thing out of it, put that on, and I've got a homemade guide. In goes the cartridge. Yes, it works. Fireflies. You may recognize this game from the, this is the game that was recently made by 8 bits in the basement. I'll put a link to this game in the uh, description. It's a fun little one or two player game. In the two player you're actually going head to head so it's a good uh, game to play with friends or whoever. Maybe a sibling that you have a rivalry with. Let's see if other games work or not. Yes, so this uh, multi-cart that I built works fine. I thought it would 
because after all it is a multi-cart that you get with the machine so no reason that the one I built shouldn't work. So this is working great. That is the Atari 2600 Plus. What do I think of it? Well, actually, I really like it. It looks great, it plays great, and it makes recording off of original cartridges so much easier. I mean, certainly I could just use an emulator to record any game footage that I want, and it looks just as good. It just doesn't have the same feel when you're playing it from the playing perspective. To be able to use an original Atari joystick with it just makes it feel so much better and it's just more enjoyable in my opinion. It's unfortunate that, that it's not 100% compatible with uh, all of the Atari games, which means I don't think this is exactly a complete replacement for the Atari 2600s that I have in my collection, but it makes a nice addition. So it's something that I'll be able to use most of the time, but some of those times when I want to play one of those games that's not compatible, I'll have to pull out the original. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this little look at the Atari 2600 Plus. If you did, don't forget that a like, a subscribe, and a comment below are all things that help out the channel a lot and are greatly appreciated. But until next time, see you later.